Hello everyone, thank you for doing your devotions with me today. We are in Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 1 through 14. Let's pray, Lord, as we come to you. Just eager to meet with you, O Lord God, we pray that your word would convict us and lead us, Lord God, lead our thoughts. Help us so that as we just surrender ourselves to your word, Lord God, that your word truly be the direction in our hearts to lead us and that we might know how we should live. We thank you, God. I pray this in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 1 through 14. When Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews, and in the presence of his associates in the army of Samaria, he said, What are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life? From those heaps of rubble, burned as they are, Tobiah the Ammonite, who was at his side, said, What are they building? Even a fox climbing up on it would break down their wall of stones. Hear us, O God, for we are despised. Turn their insults back on their own heads. Give them over as plunder in the land of captivity. Do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sins from your sight, for they have thrown insults in the face of the builders so we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height for the people worked and with all their hearts but when Sambok, tobiah the arabs the ammonites and the people of ashtad heard that the repairs of jerusalem's walls had gone ahead and that the gaps were being closed they were very angry they all plotted together to come and fight against jerusalem and stir up trouble against it but we prayed up prayed to our God and posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. Meanwhile, the people in Judah said, The strength of the laborers is giving out. There is so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. So the enemy said, Before they know it or see us, they will be right there. We will be right there among them and will kill them and put an end to the work. Then the Jews who lived near, the, near them came and told us, Ten times over, wherever you turn, they will attack us. Therefore, I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by families with their swords, spears, and bows. After I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, Don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, who is great and awesome. And fight for your families, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. Amen. We spend this time just thinking about what this passage is saying. Um, yeah, that whenever there is work to be done, there will be naysayers and there will be threats from the outside in, but also sometimes from the inside out. And that's what we see here, right? There were a group of people who are not Israelites that were threatening and uh, really upset. And um, they themselves were threatened by the work that God's people were doing, and so they were trying to put an end to it. But there was also those who were within, right? Those who were who were Jewish people who were just looking for reasons, um, expressing, look, we're so tired and it's so difficult. And Nehemiah responds by praying, and um, you know, he responds in the right way because you know, a lot of times when we face that sort of difficulty, we feel so um hopeless and we feel so discouraged but nehemiah instead of allowing it to get to him he spends time in prayer and then it says in verse 9 we pray to our god and posted a guard day and night to meet this threat they did two things they prayed and then they posted a guard and in this way what we see is that nehemiah and his and the, and the people of israel are trusting in god but also doing their part Right? And it's such an important factor of how we should go about it when we face difficulty, that we would trust in God, we would pray, and we would lean on God. But at the same time, we also need to do our part. Um, putting up guards day and night um, was such an important aspect of, of just kind of overcoming and taking responsibility. We ourselves need to also take responsibility for our own lives, our own struggles, our own trials, and put them in God's care. But also do our part. And I think that's something that's a personal 
response that we figure out, well, what does it mean for us to do our part? What does it mean for you to do your part? As you trust in the Lord, may God's eyes open yours. May God's heart open your eyes so that you may be able to know and understand what it is that God is calling you to. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. We are so thankful that we can put our hope and our trust and our care into your hands, O Lord God. And in the face of struggle, in the face of naysayers, in the face of those who are trying to discourage or tear down what we build up, O Lord God, we pray. Lord God, help us so that we will deal with the enemy without and the enemy within. That we would know, Lord God, how to respond, O Lord God, faithfully and in prayer, O Lord. So help us, Lord, to do our part as we cry out and pray, but also, Lord God, Help us, O oh Lord God, so that we may know how to respond in practical and effective ways. We thank you so much, Lord God. We pray this in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Well, just a reminder that we are meeting in our life groups tonight at 7 o'clock. So please come to the second floor sanctuary of the church. And we'll start with a few songs or a couple of songs of praise. And then we will move on into, into a time of uh discussion as we discussed last week's sermon. So I hope you are well. I hope that you can come out and join with us. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Bye-bye.